Hello good people. This is a general computer science math tutorial because the logic could be applied to any scripting language. We just happen to be doing it in JavaScript, but keep in mind it can be done this way in any scripting language. We're going to demonstrate how to calculate percentage values for things like sale pricing and much more. The equation is helpful in more scenarios than I could even possibly cover in one video. And it's an equation that you can use in any scripting language you enjoy. So it has a multitude of uses. And we're going to write a few different examples just to show the diversity of it. And we'll start with showing sale pricing calculations. So we'll go into our JavaScript scripting tag in a regular HTML document. We'll type in var price and we'll just make it equal to 150 at first. $150. Now we'll apply the sale percentage. So we'll put var sale is equal to, let's give it a 25% sale percentage. Now the next variable we're going to create is the savings. This will be a calculation of how much money that the person is going to save if they buy that $150 product at a 25% sale. So savings will show how much they saved. So to do that, we're going to group price times sale. And then we're going to divide that by 100. So you take the price of the product, you multiply it by the sale percentage, and then you divide the product of that by 100. Now let's also get a variable for the sale price, which is going to be the adjusted final price of the product after the sales percentage has been taken off. And that's simple to calculate. We just take the price minus the savings that we calculated. Okay, so now you see the complete calculation. Now let's go ahead and render all that to the web page. And you can see I'm using dot two fixed behind all of my numbers just to make sure that they're fixed to two decimal places like money. If I render this in a browser software, I get the original price is 150. The sale is 25%. Actually, that shouldn't have a dollar sign there. Let's remove that dollar sign. So the original price was 150, the sale was 25%, so the sale price is 112.50. That's what the person will pay for the item, and they're saving 37.50. Just so it's a little bit clearer, let's go ahead and change these numbers from 150 to 100, and then the calculations will look a little more simplistic. So out of a $100 product, a 25% sale, of course the sale price is going to be $75 after the sale and the savings is $25. Okay, that's the first code example we'll have. Now our next example is going to deal with element placing, playing around with elements on the on the page according to some percentage math. So what I'll do above my script element is I'll put in some HTML. You can see it's just a div with an ID of bar 1 and inside it it has a child div with no ID or class. Now I'm just going to put some style up top to affect those elements and we're going to target div with an ID of bar 1. And then we're going to target any child divs inside of bar 1 in the next rule, which gives us the following rendering. Make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. Move it over here. So in our script element, the first thing we'll do is get access to an object representation of that element on the page, bar 1. So here we have the object reference for bar 1. Now under that, we're going to type a variable called percent. And we'll make it equal to 50 at first. Then we're going to create a variable called the new left. And that's going to represent a new left position that we're going to move the little thin bar, the thin uh, dash within the bigger bar. We're going to give it a new left position. So that's going to be a number that we're going to need rounded. So we'll just put math.round. After it runs through math.round, it won't have decimal places anymore. Because the calculation that we're putting inside of math.round might result in a decimal, a floating point number. And basically we're going to use the same logic that we used in the first example. We'll take the number, multiply it by the percentage, and then we're going to divide everything by 100. So we take the bars width, and then we multiply the bars width by the percentage. Not the little black sliver of a bar. The big gray bar is the one that we're getting the width for here multiplying that by percent and then dividing by a hundred. And what that does is lets us get a percentage placement through raw mathematics instead of CSS. Now finally let's go ahead and apply the movement. So we're going to target the first 
child element in bar 1, which is this div right here. It's the little black sliver. And we're going to make it style.left property equal to the new left position. So let's take a look at that. And you see now it's in the middle, or its left position is directly in the middle, 10%. Save, refresh. And you see now the bar is at 10%, or the little black sliver, or the child rather. That child element is at 10% within its parent, 25%, and then we'll go 100%, or 0%. So no matter what the width is, let me change the width of that bar and you'll see how it's dynamic. It works for any width. So let's say the parent element is 200 pixels wide and we want to go to 50% of that width and boom, there it is. So that just shows you how to use percentages for placing and positioning things through raw math instead of using CSS because there's times in certain applications where you'll have to use JavaScript to produce the math for the placement of things. You can't always just use CSS, especially when you get into complex software development. Now you'll notice it's not true center if we were to make the width of this say 20, refresh, you'll see that its left position is matching center. So the left position for the little child div inside the parent div is at the dead center. So its left position is at the dead center at 50%. But your calculation is not accounting for the width of that. So if you want a dead center out of mathematical centering, you can just take the new left and say minus the bar child dot offset width divided by 2. And that will give you dead center. Let me refresh. See? Now it's dead center. And I just wanted to throw that in because I know there's a, a lot of technical nerdy people that watch my tutorials and they might feel compelled to comment and say, Adam, actually, that's not dead center 50%. You have to account for the width of the actual thing that you're centering and then divide that in half and then you'll get pure center. Hey, there's, there's people that work my nerves because uh, even though I know how to do a lot of things, if I don't show it on video, they'll just assume that I don't know how to do it and they, they try to school me on it so now I gotta show extra stuff just to preemptively silence a bunch of nerds. So that extra two minutes was just wasted because I know people are gonna open their mouth. Okay now for completeness we're just gonna add one more little example and this one's very simple. All we're doing is taking two values neither one of these are the percentage. See, these are just two values that we want to find a percentage difference between those two. Let's grab our browser here, refresh, and it says 40 is 75% smaller than 160, and that is true. So if we were to change 40 to 80, and then refresh the application, it says 80 is 50% smaller than 160, and really 160 is the base number, so anything is relative in this equation to that. So 80 relative to 160 is 50% smaller than 160. And it doesn't matter what numbers. You can have 153 and 79. So 79 is 48.37% smaller than 153. Let's put this back on 160 and 40. Now we'll take this same example and we'll change it up to read 40 is 25% of 160. You might want to find out what percentage one number is of another number. So now I'll pop that calculation in. And it's very similar to the others, but what we're doing is taking value 2, 40, divided by value 1, which is 160, and then we multiply that by 100. And that gives us this. 40 is 25% of 160. And if you wanted to, you can remove the two fixed, or you could just put it on zero, and you'll get no decimal points. See? 40 is 25% of 160. But there's times you might want that decimal point, and you can make as many decimal places as you need to. I'll just make it two decimal places. Let me change this number to 253. So 40 is 15.81% of 253. All right, so that shows you a whole bunch of different examples about how to use percentages in your calculations and also how to get percentages from different values that you have.